So what we're gonna do, make sure you have a pencil and a piece of paper that we're gonna draw on. We're gonna do a simple format. We're gonna do two. Well, actually, no, we're just gonna do one today. Like, yeah. All right. Because we're doing So we're going to do four quadrants. So you're going to divide your format into four quadrants, just like that, okay? Four quadrants, just like that, okay? And within these four quadrants, we're going to draw a pumpkin, a witch's, kind of a, you know, is hat, a cauldron, and a tombstone. Okay, so these are four drawings that we're going to do in four copies. Okay, I'm going to use again kind of the Philip Gustin style, which is a very simplified cartoon style that he incorporated into drawings that he made uh, during his artistic career, near the tail end of his artistic career, and they usually had a social commentary, but we're going to not do that. We're not going to have the conceptual idea of commenting on uh, politicians and their policies, but we're actually going to use this kind of simplified style in these drawings of four things from Halloween because we're in the month of October, all right? So, in the first quadrant, we're gonna do a pumpkin, okay? So, what I'd like you guys to do is just kind of watch how I approach this, and then you guys can proceed into each quadrant. So, in here, I'm going to draw kind of a elliptical, spherish looking thing, just like so, all right? And then what's interesting about pumpkins is that they have these little sections or seams or ribs. And so we're going to draw those. We're going to draw this as if we're looking at this from a three-quarter view where we can see a little bit at the top. And we can see the sides. Okay. So I'm going to draw like these little ribs and using lines kind of and searching lines to describe those little ribs. I'm just doing this quickly. Okay. Just like so. And I want to keep it natural, so the spacing is going to be different for each one of these. So it's not totally uniform. Does that make sense? I don't want it to look. And then at the top here, we're going to just draw, you know, what, a stem broken off. We're going to use this kind of broken line here, just like so. And then to keep it in kind of that cartoony Philip Guston style, we're going to just show a little patch marks. We're going to thicken up the lines to show direction and movement. Thicken up these lines and make it more cartoony. Okay. So that's your pumpkin. And you can make it into a jack o lantern if you'd like. Jack o lantern carved in there, because right now it's just a plain old pumpkin, right? Boom. Okay, so draw your pumpkin, please. Okay. So again, to do that shape, you just kind of draw 
on the lips, right? And then start building your ribs this way, right? And changing those values. And this gives it the illusion that it's a three dimensional shape on a two dimensional plane. Fun stuff. I haven't decided if I'm going to buy a pumpkin or make a jack o' lantern because we're not going to have trick or treaters. Or maybe I'll make a trebuchet or catapult or crossbow that shoots Snickers bars. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. I have a gigantic carpet tube right now that I might use as a candy shoot, but I don't think we're supposed to encourage trick or treaters. COVID times, man. COVID times. Right, Quinn? I wonder where they put it when it's not out. <laughs> exactly. Maybe, maybe she takes it apart and buries each appendage in a different part of her yard. All right, so the witch's hat is in the same kind of, like, we're making the illusion of three-dimensional, uh, three-dimensionality on a two-dimensional plane. So we're going to kind of draw a triangle shape, not necessarily perfect, kind of looks like a shark fin actually. And then we're going to, on this bottom, to connect this side and this side, we're going to create kind of an elliptical shape but broken up, and on the bottom we're going to draw from the bottom here, not quite here, but right here, and we're going to kind of create the brim of our witch's hat, okay, just like that, right, a little like torn up ribbon that goes around the bottom, and these areas here will kind of Create folds, right? And then we'll also use broken shadows over here to show that it's three dimensional, right? So in here, in these areas I've designated. We're making our light source come from the left side, and I'm going to just shade. And because Philip Gustin keeps things kind of, I don't know, textury and not perfect, I'm going to not make this smooth. I'm going to keep it kind of broken. Yeah. I might extend this, yeah, to make it look a little bit more haggard. And then down here, Picking up these lines, pressing down, and then also, again, using some of his texture strokes here. Just like so. He was a very controversial artist because uh, of his subject matter. You know, he had a lot to say. His later work wasn't necessarily as accepted as his kind of Renaissance figurative painting or abstract work. Right. Which is that? Triangular shape, curve the bottom line that connects to the left and the right side, 
turn this around just like so. Okay. And that's how we started. I don't know, back in the day, people used to send not just Christmas cards, they also sent Halloween cards to each other. And they've kind of gone out of fashion, which makes me very sad. I've seen some really cool classic Halloween cards. I've also seen some really scary Halloween cards. It's scary in the sense that they used, you know, photographs of children in homemade costumes and homemade costumes from like the 1920s were the most frightening thing I've ever seen. I don't know if you've ever seen any horror movies like The Hills Have Eyes or anything like that, but those horror movies have nothing on classic handmade costumes from the 1920s in America frightening and scary looking things you've ever, ever seen. Or handmade, like, Easter Bunny costumes from the 20s. Those are even scarier, actually. So, if you really want to freak yourself out, look up Easter Bunny's uh, early turn of the century America. All right, so we're gonna go down to the cauldron. So we're gonna do something very similar to the ellipse that we made for the pumpkin. All right, we're gonna kind of, again, notice I'm using searching lines. I'm not drawing a definitive hard line yet. I'm just kind of figuring out my shape. Yeah, oh, look at that, okay. Then I'm gonna do an ellipse at the very top that overlaps it. Just like this little oval ellipse, see that? And some little feet seeds. So let's just figure that out. Let's pull this down. Is that so much to pull? It doesn't have to be entirely. And then I'm going to combine these shapes the ellipse and like a well, little sphere shape, a little squashed sphere shape. I'll combine them just like that. See that? Then, I'm going to make another ellipse on the inside of the other, the first ellipse I made, just like that. And there we have a cauldron. A really kind of, you know, cliche cauldron, you know, where they make potions and brews and things like that for like a, I don't know. Potions class in Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Alright. The leaky cauldron. Alright. Oh my gosh. I'm put it on. Put a little fire underneath it. I'll do some like cartoon kind of fire. Which kind of looks honestly like leaves. <laughs> Just like so. And then what we're gonna do to, you know, cauldrons aren't white. They're usually what? Iron black. So we will put some lines here that represent a reflection of light. We'll make a little crescent moon shape or banana shape here. A little banana shape over here. Maybe a little reflection shape just like that. Okay. And then we're going to just kind of shade around. And we're going to keep that texture. Because again, Philip Gustin did that. He kept a lot of texture in his drawings. So I love them. He used a lot of pen and ink in his. We're also going to darken lines. Dark and everything. Uh, 
I can put some, you know, wisps of, of faux steam coming up, you know? Again, not texture. I have a cauldron, guys. It's a cauldron. Right? Put your potions in there. Boil, boil, and bug. Dark spirits help me pass AP hug. <laughs> yeah, that was a terrible joke. I'm sorry. Please, please accept my apologies. That was terrible. That was awful. That was such a dad joke. <laughs> it was a full on dad joke. <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. <laughs> I love Halloween. Yeah. So my costume this year is uh, it's something I've worn a lot for many years. I want to actually, you'll see it in Zoom. I'm gonna be uh, Russell from Up. I'm dusting off that costume. I mean, I'm already halfway there. He's a chubby Asian kid. Done. All right, so the last of the four Halloween drawings in the style of Philip Gustin is going to be the tomb. Stone. And tombstones come in, in, in a variety of shapes, sizes, and, and uh, motifs. But we're going to do kind of like the typical, uh, the curved top tombstone like this. And then we're going to, so it's kind of like an old school surfboard shape, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then we're going to pull a curved line from the top here, extend it past the one on the left, and then pull it down so that it runs parallel with this one, okay? We're going to have it kind of having a gangster lean, all right? See that? Because, you know, if it's really old in the earth, I mean, it's been disturbed and moves it around. We're going to put some overgrown grass on the bottom, just like so. We're also going to show a little bit of wear and tear on the edges, so notice how I've, I've drawn kind of lightly. Actually, I'm going to pull this over a little bit straighter across and then curve it down. Yeah, that's better. But we're going to put some cracks on the, on the edges. Maybe some cracks this way. Draw those in. Show some texture. Break up the, the edge a little bit with a little bit of wear and tear. Oh, there we go. We're gonna show some, do some shading here, but with like heavy marks, scratchy marks. Right. Just like so, boom, boom, boom. Break up that clean edge. Again, I want texture, texture, texture. Cool marks here, cool marks here. We'll do a generic, like, R, R, E. Okay, there we go. And then we'll do some texture marks all over. 
because I'm really on the outside. In the style of sort of dusting. Just like that. But if you, you know, in yours you can say R.I.P. Mom or you know, R.I.P. Little Brother and Sister. Or like, say you could do it with your Not to rest in peace or R.I.P. My Little Bro. Not. Or whatever. You know. Or R.I.P. So, those are four things related to this month's celebration of All Hallows' Eve. I love this. And then we can also make these into little cars or whatever, right? We're gonna do some texture down here. Yeah, I love that. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Again. In Philip Gustin style. Okay. So, you guys, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, and outstanding um, October break. Unplug, get away from your computer. Go on hikes, go to the beach, make art on your own, read some books for your own pleasure, binge watch some Netflix. I've been binge watching Teenage Bounty Hunters, it's pretty funny. I know, it sounds weird, but it's, it's hilarious. But what I want you guys to do, I will be uh, posting this as an assignment. I want you to turn in uh, some photographs or a photograph of your, your four quadrants. Um, that's your only homework or assignment for this week. Is that clear? Yes. I will put it into the Google Classroom as an assignment so you guys can upload images and turn in that assignment, okay? It's worth five points. Five out of five. Preserve your A. I think everybody in here has an A. Uh, with the exception of uh, Sam Charlton. I'm just kidding, Sam. Just kidding. Okay. No, you have an A. You guys are doing great. Uh, turn these drawings in. I'll post this probably by the end, uh, right before lunch. So look for that on Google Classroom. Otherwise, I'm going to let you guys go. Have a wonderful October break. If you have any questions or concerns, email me. And if you haven't picked up your art kit, please schedule to come by between now and Friday. Otherwise, adios. Have a wonderful, wonderful break. Bye, guys. Peace. You're welcome. Bye-bye, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and break. Bye. Hey, good job. That's awesome. Sure. I'd love to see it. Dude, Womble with the Yerb. You can come... You can come by today or Thursday or Friday, anytime. Yeah, I'm in room 41. Just come by. We'll, we'll go to room 40 and pick it up. You're welcome. Bye. What's up, Giselle? That looks... It could have. <laughs> it could have gone very political. <laughs> you still can. I'm not going to judge. Even though I'm a, I'm a teacher and a person of color in the state of California, and I'm part of three unions, you probably can guess what political bent I am. <laughs> right. <laughs> Did you have fun? That's okay. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. It's a drawing. Yeah.
Absolutely. I like, if you look at some of his drawings, it's got all this really fun texture. It's really playful. Even though it's got, like, he was a real strong critic, critic of Richard Nixon in the 60s and 70s. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd love to take a look at it. Please. Yeah. You're welcome. You too. Have a wonderful break. Take, take care. Bye. Dun, 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 dun.